Hi and welcome back to the Titanic build. In this episode I plan to show how my electrics will work as well as some other bits like replating the wing propellers, safety bars and a couple of other things. Firstly I had to build these supports out of acrylic for the batteries and I also made some boxes to fill with resin. Um, these are so I can drop my standoff feet in for my PCB um, and also give it a solid mounting point once the resin is hardened. Here I'm using a little sheet of styrene to act as a spacer between the battery and the circuit board while the resin hardens. So now I'm ready to install my two 12 volt 2.1 amp hour batteries, followed by the battery leads and I'm connecting these batteries in parallel which means I connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. Now I'm ready to start installing my circuit boards. This is the main circuit board. Followed by the auxiliary circuit board, which is for my relays, um, which controls my lighting and smoke. First off, I'm connecting the power for the smoke and lighting. And now I'm plugging in the triggers. These cables plug into the receiver and they trigger the relays to turn on and off various devices. So these were the stanchions that I made to hold the propeller, uh, the prop shaft in place. And then what I've done was got two bits of styrene, um, sandwiched them together to make one side so nice and thick, um, super glued them into place. And then I've drilled two M3 threaded inserts in and then I've also notched out a slot in this one so that the servo could just be slid into a place so if there's anything any problems with that that can always be replaced at a later date and slide that under there so it's out of the way of the motors at all times What I've also done to make it easier to connect in the rudder is I've just put in an extension lead which is also fitted in this bulkhead and that's fixed in place. And all I need to do is connect it in. So, right, so the way my circuit board is wired is that you've got your main positive and negative, and this is a permanent negative bar, so this is always connected to negative. The positive comes in this lead, it goes through the main fuse, out of there, into one the common of the relay. Now, if you don't know what a relay is, it's just a switch that can be triggered by applying power to these terminals here. At all times, two, of the re two sides of the relay will be connected, but when power is applied, they break, and then, it, and then applies that same power onto this leg, which is how we're going to use it for triggering the system to switch on. So to start the boat, what we need is power to come from here and loop back onto this pin here, and that will fire this switch. So to achieve that, what I'm doing is I'm going to mount this aux jack which is a 2.5 aux jack underneath one of the cap stands I'm thinking at the moment. I'm not too sure where yet, which is why this is still loose and temporary. But then to start it, what I need is this to short out, which means to touch the wires together. So to do that, I'm gonna take this pin, take all the out casing off and sheathing, etc., and I'm gonna solder the pin together so that this is a completely shorted out pin, which essentially what I've done on the back of it just as a temporary fix while I was testing. So, and you'll see the power is now on, and you can see here. And just by clicking it in, you can 
Now, as I stated before, I know absolutely nothing about radio control, but if it wasn't for the Model Boat Guys videos on YouTube, I probably wouldn't know where to start, especially with the RC side of it. So a lot of these components are stuff that he's used, um, which is the Xmitter transmitter and receiver, uh, which is about 60 quid, 60, 70 quid um, online, and a Marine Viper ESC, and also these motors from Cornwall Model Boat. So I've got to give him a big shout out for all of his work on his YouTube channel because if it wasn't for his channel I wouldn't be able to put any of this together. It would take me a lot of working out to do. Um, so moving forward, the rest of the system, these switches up here are exactly the same as this switch over here except for these are controlled by the 5 volts from the Xmitter receiver. So they can be triggered on and off by my transmitter. So, if I want to trigger my lights, for example, that will then switch the positive through on this switch now. Same as what we're doing on that one. Uh, we can, it's got a permanent negative, yeah? All right, so it's permanently wired to negative and it's waiting for a switched positive to switch it on. Um, and this is a voltage regulator which means I can adjust the voltage um, which again I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have to do for the LED lighting um, and these are again about sort of 10 or so on eBay uh, well worth having. So going back to wiring, once the switch is switched power is then applied to this bar, this positive bar which then I've wired individual wires out to each one of the fuses. And obviously the fuses are there to protect any shorts uh, or any problems with the circuit. These obviously these are meant to blow. And that's pretty much it. The you've got your two bars at the back here, and they're fed by the ESC, um, and pretty much everything else, relays, servo, it's all controlled from your receiver here. The ESC um, plugs into the receiver obviously because that's what runs your motors. I've also soldered a diode in this cable here for historical accuracy so that the center propeller doesn't actually work in reverse it only works in, in forward whereas the outer wing propellers will work in reverse so that is pretty much the basics and when i'm ready so this is the cap stand that fell off and the system switches off In this section here, I've left that gap purposely to put the smoke generator in, um, and I've also laid a sheet of styrene and glued that into position so that it's thick enough to take an M3 threaded insert, so I can, again, do the same as what I've done on the servo and bolt that into place. So I've decided to replace some of the kit doors with some of the KA set doors, because it's got some extra rivet in detail, it looks so much better, as you can see. So we've got these ones here, these ones are just slightly wider up here, we've got these ones here, and we've also got the gangway entrances here. So replacing the doors was the same process as what I did with the coaling doors, and that's just levelling off the door, um, sticking the new ones on with CA glue. Um, except for the gangway doors um, which needed the windows removed so that it could let light out.
Another job that I wanted to try and do is to install these safety bars, which actually I think turned out quite well in the end. And all I did was measure the length I needed on one of the portholes and then cut a strip off of some of the leftover styrene that I got from the hole plating that I did. I then cut some thin horizontal strips off of that um, and after that it was just a case of finding some of the same size ones and gluing them on with some Tamiya extra thin cement. Once the glue is dry, these can actually be gently sanded so you can get them all symmetrical and the right um, heights and um, depths etc. Next I went on to install some of the pad eyes, um, although I didn't use all of the pad eyes um, because the smallest ones were just an absolute nightmare to piece together um, for me. Um, so maybe later on I might order some 3D printed ones if it bothers me that much and they're that noticeable that they're not there. So I also wasn't happy with the kit wings for the uh, wing propellers so I used some more of the leftover hole plating sheets um, to make some new plates. Um, this is actually after priming the hole and refilling areas that I'm not happy with so excuse all the filler everywhere. This took me a huge amount of time and working this out um, and unfortunately I didn't actually manage to grab any of it on film um, because I was pretty much making it up as I went along. So after sanding all the kit detail off, I then drew a line across this front edge here um, to give me a mark of where the front row of plates would end up. Then I measured, an even uh, I measured the distance between there so I could evenly space the three rows of plates that I needed. Um, mainly these two because these are the ones that are most noticeable because these ones swoop in underneath. Um, after that I then measured the distance that I'd obviously worked out for these two plates got that as far down to here as I could off of this line and again mark that there um, and then marked another one there and worked off of obviously that distance so I could draw straight lines uh, to give me something to work to for all the rows. I then measured the plates above for the length of the top row um, but I also left them wider um, so that they could like say swoop down underneath and then I used this image here to copy the plating pattern um, and it's pretty you know standard it's all just it's just straight plates except for this one here which I noticed looks slightly different it's almost like a it, it goes into like a rectangle shape and then it curves under here so that plate actually comes all the way down over to here um, but you can see that in the photo um, I also made sure to leave the ends of it hanging over um, so that I could fill this later on with some marine epoxy and then file that all down gently to give that flared sort of shape at the back of the propeller I then use this image here to try and then copy the two or three odd plates where the wing propellers join the hull um, because it just looks a little bit different. Um, um, that is pretty much it. Like I said, it's a really fiddly job. Um, not one to take on lightly, but and even then, once it's done, you still need to go on and feel because, like I say, this styrene using the Tamiya Extra Thin, it does tend to cause little marks. I've just seen one there that I want to probably put a bit of filler over. Um, but yeah, um, I also like the idea of trying to show that panel line across this edge. Um, so that's taken a bit of time. Just, I've had to keep them slightly apart and using um, 
knives and, and sanding sticks and different things to try and get as a level line as I can. Um, and even then, that's now been filled again and run down. Uh, what I found to get that line is to fill it, and while the fill is still wet, just gently running a cocktail stick down it. Um, and that seems to be getting me a nice even line so far, but like I said, I'm still not happy with that. I'll probably fill it again yet, but we'll see. These are the only images that I actually took while I was doing the wing propellers. Um, so it gives you a bit more of an understanding of what it looked like before primer. This is the marine epoxy being applied. And once this had dried, I filed it down with a very fine um, file and 2000 grit wet and dry. So on the bow there's a panel that I wanted to scribe in which I'll show you now um, and this is a removable panel so that they could swing the bow anchor out um, if they ever needed to use it. And what I've done is I've just put the fore castle in and as you can see in the picture it's pretty much in line with the this edge or this corner of the anchor wheel. So what I've done is I've just sort of masked off the right sort of shape. Um, and I've doubled the tape up to try and also give me a little bit of an edge to help guide the scribe. And that's about it for this episode. Um, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be busy um, rubbing down and, and priming and, and checking everything and getting it ready for paint. So hopefully in the next episode, um, we should be getting some colour on. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.